And I'm Patrick Moser. Box Office Bonanza is a movie review show where we take two new releases in the theater, two new releases onto DVD, and we have a special feature called The Big Bonanza Bust. Also, occasionally, we'll be bringing in some new segments that'll be a lot of fun. That's right, folks. This can be one heck of a ride, and you're not going to miss want to miss one episode. Giddy up! Our first movie for review this episode is Leatherheads. Leatherheads is a romantic comedy set against the backdrop of America's fledgling professional football league in 1925. George Clooney, who also directs this movie, plays Dodge Connolly, a charming but brash 40-something football hero who is determined to guide his team from bar brawls to packed stadiums. After the team loses its sponsor and the entire league faces collapse, Clooney convinces college football star and World War veteran Carter Rutherford, played by John Krasinski, who's Jim from The Office, to play on their team and join the ragtag ranks. Add in the two men's love interest and investigative reporter Lexley Littleton, played by Renee Zilweger, and you have a movie that they call Leatherheads. What was your opinion of Leatherheads, Russell? Well, Patrick, I thought that in the beginning of this movie, it was very well played out that the characters were all going to be defining what their plot was going to be throughout the movie. But for me, the movie overall was too slow and uneventful. I felt that at the end of the movie, I was wondering, where had those two hours gone? It was very discerning for me. But one aspect to this movie that I did thoroughly enjoy was the timeline that they had and the music that went along with it as well as the, the design of the dressing. That to me was also very well thought out. So as far as that goes, I would give that a pretty high ranking. But the only downfall as far as that goes would be that Renee Zellweger, they made her look a lot older. And for me, that didn't quite do her justice. I think that they could have portrayed her in a much fashionable way. And back to the music, it really reminded me more of the theme songs to Cheers and Bill Cosby, which may, may be okay in a way. Some people may like that. For me, it was not the highlight of the movie. It was pretty nifty in the beginning, but more towards the end, it was just getting very tiresome. But for overall, I would say that, for me, that was a bust. I'm not going to lie. That was not one of the, the better films that Clooney has, has ever started. So a bust for you. Yes, Patrick, a bust for me. I see. Well, for me, Leatherheads had very few strong moments and way too many weak moments. Some of the stronger moments were the dialogue between Clooney's character and Zellweger's character. I think they had a very nice on-screen chemistry. In two particular scenes, the interaction between the two was amazing. For me, I loved the soundtrack. The soundtrack was outstanding. This is a soundtrack that I would buy. But when the soundtrack is the highlight of the movie, it doesn't bode well. I thought there were some weak points, too. One of them, the casting of uh, John Krasinski in the role of the hero, didn't work for me. I remember him as Jim on The Office, not a football-playing war hero. Also, there was too many pretty ridiculous parts in this movie that didn't make sense to the, the whole plot. And in about an hour and ten minutes in this movie, it threw me from the tracks, quite literally. Watch the movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. So for me, I would have to give it a bust as well. Our second movie review is Drill Bit Taylor. Now, Drill Bit Taylor is played by the famous actor Owen Wilson. Now, in this movie, Wilson plays the bodyguard for three high schoolers of the freshman status. Actors Nate Hartley, Troy Gentile, and Ian Roberts are fresh faces to the showbiz, playing as Wade, Ryan, and Jim. These three high schoolers hire a bodyguard because of the classical high school bully scenario. Once hired, Wilson's character begins to show his true colors through unfortunate events throughout this movie. The kids later find that they may have hired an ex-marine, but lied about his abilities as an effective bodyguard. 
Turns out that Drillbit is nothing more than a homeless man misguided and faced with a moral dilemma. Well, how about I give my opinion on this movie, Russell? Um, I would have to say that this was not a very good movie, in my opinion. It had a corny plot, very sophomore humor. Um, you know, maybe some of you out there watching might relate to it. But uh, Owen Wilson has never been one of my favorite actors. In fact, the last time I think I really enjoyed Owen Wilson in a film was when he was the voice of Lightning McQueen on Cars. Um, there was a couple good performances in, in, in this movie. Uh, I would say that the, uh, the, the, the pudgy kid, I kind of relate to the pudgy kids, I don't know why, but I would say the pudgy kid, Ryan, um, you may have seen him in uh, Good, Luck, Good Luck Chuck, uh, the Troy Gentile character, he uh, did a very good job in this movie. Now the other one, the skinnier guy, the tall skinny guy, the guy who played Wade, I felt that he forced his performance, and because of the sophomore humor, there was some laughs in it, but nothing spectacular. I would have to give this one a bust. Russell? Well, Patrick, I thought The Drilled Taylor was one of those movies where, if you're not expecting a lot, it's going to be great. However, I don't think that the director, Stephen Brill, was really wanting this to, to be the motive of this movie. I mean, don't get me wrong, there was some good parts to it, other parts not so good. There was some funniness to it, but not enough to really to constitute a bonanza. So for me, this is going to have to be a bust. All right, well, that will do it for our new releases. Uh, our next episode, we will be doing 21 and... Street Kings. All right, so let's go on to the video picks.